really misses a pull there. Really important miss for SSG to capitalize on um, is the fact that uh, the, the great, split, but a great pull, a great suck from Cryman. as possible so um seeing whether they change that'll be interesting to see game number two sticking with the same composition on the side of ssg iron is gonna stay the same as well mr p with the barley and of course have dowel who's gonna roll in nice and early try and stop bobby from cashing in that bolt and he wasn't able to do it it did leave himself just before more bolts picked up by og so that's gonna be first siege bot going over to ssg I know it doesn't sound like much, but this is a great, great start for SSG if they can just retain position here and get that first uh, bot on the uh, the INTC's uh, Ike. Then you know, being able to spawn trap here will go such a long, long way. And with this brawler comp here, Oji going down the side here, taking a lot of damage for getting the stun, and then Cryman rolled in to catch, to take uh, and tank for some of that damage. Look at this amazing! Oh my God! It looks SSG. like it's over. The Ike NTZ has been demolished by ssg i take back everything i said they're slowly winning me over with this composition arc <laughs> wow i mean honestly you gotta break that down and see how clever that was from ssg because og went in quite prematurely to tank some damage to get the stun and then crying man rolled in to, to redirect the ike onto him to tank damage for og and then bobby started tanking damage for everyone else it starts to hit that mental exhaustion that comes from playing because you do get mentally exhausted exhausted in a series it's not physical exertion you have to think and it is quite tiring and that fatigue often influences play later in the series yeah absolutely and uh, you know both of these teams making their debut um in the uh, the monthly land events they're going to be both wanting to start off on a really really good footing here so everything to play for here big points big cash as well as a great pull from bobby takes down we do there, shutting me down mid-sentence, uh, the, the level <laughs> coming in then for SSG. Great adaptation, both teams opting to go for the gene now to change it up. Bobby getting the better of his counterpart so far as the bot will walk in. Marcel onto the back line, try and keep Bobby away from the fight and keep him outside of the range of the icon. The siege bot, we do doing exactly what I want to see, which is using his super to pull the siege bot away from the Ike and relieve pressure after the fact. Gotta say, I'm loving this new uh, brawler comp here from SSG. Bobby going back to his roots playing Gene, something that he's really comfortable doing with that great auto aim pull on Marcel. <laughs> OG as well going with Barley, getting some great damage over uh, the Siege bot as well. It's gonna go a really long way. And already look at this control, this new amount of area control from SSG, a much different display here going on. Level 6 Siege bot coming in now, like you said, off the back of great mid-control from the lineup of Space Station Gaming, a completely different team and a level of confidence we haven't seen from them so far. We do buy more time with his own super, but here comes the offensive from SSG. They're wow. going in for the icon. There's nothing to stop them. SSG will equalize the set and we're going to game 5. Taking it down to the wire then, and that just goes to show, I really feel like that is, uh, that that change up, that brawler change up. OG going with Barley, able to get that damage. Uh, Bobby going with, with Gene and just consistently hitting those pulls. Um, it's definitely giving them a bit of a new, a new lease of life here, uh, going into this, this final round, this final game of Siege now. Maybe if he goes 2-0 up in the series, he might contemplate doing that. Map number five on your screens right now, do or die, for Siege, and it's the same composition coming out for SSG, putting a lot of faith into the Gene, and it's looking like INTZ decided to switch it up and get the Mr. P instead. Yeah, a really strange time, I think, to, to switch things up. Uh, I'm not sure whether Mr. P will get as much damage for me uh, as something like, uh, you know, uh, well, you know, a, a thrower or something, but, uh, you know, we're going to see now the first push coming in for SSG. I, I'm not sure what I feel about this change abroad to Mr. P, bro. I, I mean, it's kind of a weird time to change it. And look at the amount of pressure now coming in from SSG. They set up the, <laughs> they're trying to set up the robo board to distract the siege bot, so they're able to get the last call on a couple of bottles onto the Ike. They will drop it down to 61% HP. The bolt lead isn't too significant right now, but the issue is INTZ can't get any mid control, so they're never going to be able to catch up. 
Absolutely, this is the problem now. With, with Mr. P having uh, no real impact with his super, um, it, it's kind of like a bit of a deflated push that we're seeing from INTZ, giving Space Station Gaming a great chance. Not even a single bolt is banked currently this by is INTZ. A level nine coming in and nothing in the bank ready to come back for a, for a final potential push, even if they wanted it, Trin. This, this is over, Art. This composition has completely backfired for INTZ right now. SSG just getting exactly what they want. They pulled Marcel out of the barrel roll, and I think INTZ realized that this is over right now. They're just throwing around, having a good time, enjoying it, having a mental reset and going, we're gonna have to fight him on the next one, lads. SSG going to equalize the match by taking Siege. Wow, uh, it, it couldn't have come at a better time. It's got to be said, a lot of pressure, but actually SSG made it look quite, quite easy to them. It looks quite comfortable. Um, and a bit shaky, more so from, from INTC with that broader change. I think that they might be well regretting uh, that change up to Mr. P, uh, looking back on that, uh, and that may have cost them that second set. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It really fell by the wayside on that final map. So we're getting ready to jump in to uh, Bounty as our next map, and we're heading to Layer Cake for this one. That rock card that he's been holding back on so far. Well, it's Bobby that's going to be playing the Brock this time around, and it's uh, OG on the bow instead. So they're going to be using that Super Totem, no doubt to help them with the endeavor to break that terrain, but also provide some pressure. Marcel out with the Mr. P, and Guido on the Piper. So here's how this is going to play out right now. The aggression coming in from INTZ in terms of positioning, but Bobby walks forward to get that first kill nice and easy for SSG to take the early lead. Gotta say, I love the bow pick from OG. Uh, OG actually yeah, really does love playing bow. Um, I got a lot of milestones with that particular brawler. Did some interviews with him on that. So um, it's going to actually allow both of uh, Bobby and OG to share the load of two really interesting brawler picks. And uh, look at this, is hunkering down now on that gadget, getting that supers quickly and um, not much of a lead, but I think this is a really good strategy here from SSG. So far, playing quite conservatively, playing around behind the terrain. Bobby's going to keep firing those rockets from afar, trying to get that pick damage. And the same thing can be said about OG. Crimeman's going to be sitting on his head first, waiting for the right time to strike. Bobby takes out the head first coming in from Consti, so he won't be falling prey to that damage. It's all very slow for the side of SSG. They have a lead, they don't need to throw it away, and they don't need to do anything risky. Yeah, Bobby's going to be very, very cautious here. Guido is playing Piper. It's about two shots on Bobby um, before he will go down. Those four stars would absolutely be uh, beneficial now for INTZ for a very quick turnaround. Got to be careful. SSG have got to be a bit careful with regards to that potential turnaround there. Well, the stars have gone into a two difference right now. So if Bobby goes down, that will spell disaster for SSG, who are just trying to sit in this power totem and give themselves that ability to really deflect the attack of INTZ that's coming in. 15 seconds remaining, and they're pushing them to the brink. Head first, taken out by the side of INTZ. Bobby has the rocket rain. He's gonna drop it right on top of Guido. Forces out the super defensively from Guido to stay alive. Marcel incredibly low. Can't get the angle to take him out, but no kills coming for INTZ. So Space Station Gaming walk away with map number one. Wow, I don't know whether you saw OG on that bottom right hand side was so very low at the end of that game, which would have given the draw, but it didn't happen. SSG are victorious in that first game, uh, but it was uh, for a great deal of time there. SSG being very much pushed back into their spawn, and I, I don't know whether they got maybe a little bit of lucky towards the end of the game. You can't create the sight lines, you need to get value. Yeah, really, really valid points there as well. We're going to see any changes there. Not to uh, not to SSG, that's for sure. Uh, we are going to see pretty much the same couple we saw last game here. Yep. And uh, we do take that right-hand side lane as Mr. P. Um, we, didn't, we saw a little bit of gadget use from Guido in the last game, but um, I think he could have used it a bit more successfully. So oh! he goes down very early on there on that right-hand side lane. Bobby just absolutely riggedy wrecked him on the right hand side and now yet again INTZ have to go on the offensive and they struggled to do this in the previous match. Do they have something else? Consti's in a very difficult spot. He stayed way too aggressive for too long and this lead is really opened up. Yeah, I, I think it was a bit too too much of an aggressive start. We do now on 18 HP there, but I don't think OG can quite secure the, the, the kill. But it will place down some mines straight onto the middle. Um, and and SSG just focusing on tearing this map up right now. I get the feeling that there's not going to be much left of that middle area, which is going to cause a lot of problems there probably for Marcel. 
can make it incredibly difficult for him to find any safe angles of attack. They're moving forward. Bobby has the rocket rain. He's going to drop it on. Destroy the robo port of the Spencer as well as that terrain as well. So Marcel has to move forward and try and play behind this aggressive cover. But another rocket rain coming in from Bobby will miss out for now. They're trying to find the damage. Crying Man needs to be careful. He's sitting on four stars. It's an eight to one lead with 30 seconds remaining, but there is a potential for a very fast swing if they can find the right kills. Consti throws up the head first. They're going to clash over with Crying Man, so they cancel each other out. Consti very low from the snipe from Bobby. Marcel trying to find the damage, but won't get there in time. And so they will get a kill onto Crying Man. They just need to find one more with 17 seconds remaining, and INTZ can come back into this. Crying Man going down there could be a really bad thing for SSG unless they can hold their ground here for this push coming in by INTC with five seconds. They put a takedown from Bobby. The super hit so, so well from Bobby there. And OG with the finish. A comfortable ending then for SSG when it looked like it might have gone the way of INTZ if they hadn't have uh, just been able to, to hold on at the entrance. <laughs> Space Station Gaming still sticking strong with this particular composition and walking away with another victory on Layer Cake. One more on this map and they will go to match against INTZ after dropping the first match. So really, I think this is the point with your INTZ, you need to change composition. This isn't working for you right now and you're knocking on death's door for bounty. Teams are in that spot right now. Either of them could come out ahead, moving into the next match, uh, moving to the next set, sorry. As you jump onto map number five, Super Totem's already out for OG, so they're gonna get that added bonus nice and early and then go out swinging. Yeah, I, I like that idea of Bobby trying to get his super quite early on because uh, the more that uh, Bobby can do in terms of breaking some of that cover, the less that uh, Marcel can do in terms of sniping power for INTZ. Bobby not falling victim to those shots just yet. There's that first rocket rain to shut down some of the angles and no one's gone for that first early start yet. Marcel going awfully close. The mines are now in place. It will make it slightly harder for INTZ to be decisive about going for it. Maybe it allows SSG to go for it instead. Bobby picking up that first start, and now they go on the defensive ever so slightly. Yeah, I actually think it's a really, really smart play by SSG. They're just taking it very, very slowly there, knowing full well that that one star just it doesn't really do much in terms of the score. Obviously, it puts them in the lead for sure. Um, but it just means that now INTC have to be the ones to make the moves. And now we see why that's so important as Marcel goes down to OG, giving them now a three-star lead. Pressure's on for INTZ. We've seen them struggle to come back from this one. It's been the slow story of them over the series of being able to change up to be playing aggressively. They really need to pull that same effort out now. 30 seconds remaining. One kill onto OG will seal the deal. If not, they're going to have to find two. And I think OG knows that, so he's going to be playing extra defensive here. Yeah, I've got to point out as well, Bobby is hitting these shots so, so accurately you know, right now. And um, I think that if this continues to go this way, it should be a comfortable win for SSG. But again, we've seen it time and time again. INTZ can turn it around in the final seconds. And here we go. The push is on from INTZ. Marcel is down, 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 down for it. it. That's it. Bobby goes aggressive with the gadget as well to shut down the tick and close down the thrower's range. They do exactly what to do there, Ark. And they will take away Layer Cake as we move on to set number four. Kind of funny, because we hadn't seen, I don't think, or at least I hadn't seen any use of uh, that Brock gadget until then, but what a great use of it, actually, to kind of take that that side lane and that choke there uh, in those final seconds. Uh, just a really interesting use of why Brock is still really, really good and viable in layer cake, for sure. Yeah, you know, you just saw it on the, I think it's the last replay you just saw there, Consti obviously going to abuse the fact he can hide behind cover with the tick. Brock says, well, no, your cover is your gadget to definitely be viable here for sure. Yeah. Wait, wait, hang on a minute. That's a crow. Yeah, crow's gadget right now is crazy strong. I actually really like that pick. Never, yeah, I don't so think, really seen crow being used competitively. And now things are changing uh, massively right now. Right, so two Pams, Tar and Jean on the side of SSG, but it's Crow and Penny backing up the Pam on INTZ. Did we see Crow at all last month, Ark? I don't think we did. I don't think we have, but his gadget has got to be said. It's incredibly strong at providing a pretty much invincible shield. It's not quite that strong, but it, it does feel like it. Crow has been uh, given a, a substantial boost 
uh, a much needed boost. And then we're going to see that gadget being used as well by Tara, <laughs> by Crying Man. Uh, very much a, a more traditional comp being used by SSG and uh, uh, I had to see mixing things up a lot. Yeah, the, the, the boomers are really taking it to the zoomers in terms of compositions right now. Bobby manhandling Marcel as he tries to get anywhere near him when that super's online. Pulls him straight in and absolutely demolishes him. So he's not able to find the angles right now. This is looking really strong for SSG and I'm struggling to see the INTZ counterplay right now. It's going to be a tough one for sure. I mean, Bobby can counter a lot of those turrets, so he can pull, if he chooses to, the penning turret. He can pull the pan turret if he chooses to. But now look at Marcel here, noticing the position that Bobby's in. Goes for the jump. Bobby pops his gadget and couldn't have timed that better in order to stay alive there. Beautiful play by him. Gets the heal off and mitigates some of the damage over time that comes from Crow's attacks. Nine gems to four. One more will definitely make sure that INTZ needs to go on the offensive because the spawn rate wouldn't be high enough for them to match. So you need to be careful. Penny's still firing out coin bags. Crying Man sitting on his own super. The gravity could be applied here, but the pressure certainly in control of INTZ. So they have that mid control and they can keep grabbing the gems. There's the gravity. Takes out Marcel and OG can walk in for the collection. Constantine's in a bad spot by himself and it's a 2v1 for SSG to take him out with 12 gems, and they make that Mr. 17 coming in off the back of Bobby's super. INTZ have been demolished in game number one. Absolute annihilation in those final moments then, uh, with, with SSG just taking out every player for INTZ to secure those gems. Uh, and, and you know, this is what I'm, I, I'm thinking now is I think this this more traditional brawler comp then uh, could be the way to go. Even then we see with that crow jump, try to capitalize on that takedown for Bobby. Uh, Bobby's gadget can provide him some additional health in the process. And so, you know, it's gonna be a difficult thing unless that timing is there to really capitalize using cry. I think, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, there's adaptations coming out. INTZ rolling with the Mr. P, the Pam, and the Gene. So they want to try and match it. The only difference being that the Tara is still on the side of SSG. I had to see really adamant to play Mr. P today, and I can't help but feel like he might have just been pushed a little bit out of the meta recently with the introduction of gadgets. We've not really seen him play too much by other I, I love this. I, I love this so much. They're using Tara's gadget to scout them in the side brushes and Bobby just says, get over here and pulls them in. They reveal when Bobby has super online, find an easy target and pick them off one by one. This is amazing from SSG. Yeah, it's a really thought through comp and I really like the use of that Tara gadget for sure. Just to be able to allow Bobby to use his super is a great use of teamwork and uh, roller comps just working really, really in favor of each other. Well, Crying Man's found a way to sneak into the back line. The porters aren't going to allow him to do that undetected. OG's trying to do exactly the same thing. I think Constantine knows because the porters are going to keep scouting. There's so much value from Mr. P. I can see why they maybe went for the pick here because it's really shutting down these sneak attacks that SSG are attempting to make on the back line of INTZ. Yep, yep, really valid point to be fair. Porters, in, in, in case you're unaware, will seek people out regardless as to whether they are in a bush or not. So it's a great indication of, of seeking out, uh, in much the same way that Crying Man's gadget is used in that same instance to find uh, uh, people that are trying to be sneaky. It's definitely working out pretty well for INTC, who have got uh, seven gems in the bag now. But now look at Crying Man's position there. That is very, very dangerous there with that super on hold now. And INTC can't really push the middle right now. Yeah, they won't win a straight up engagement against SSG's composition. They have to abuse cover and the fact that they have all these tools at their disposal to spot the attacks coming in. If SSG can get on INTZ, they will win that brawl. And I think INTZ are paying them that respect. So when Bobby and Crying Man are going aggressive and they have the position to stay alive, they will do so to try and get the lead and stay in the game. Yeah, it's a bit one thing that could go against SSG as really misses a pull there. Really important miss for SSG to capitalize on um, is the fact that uh, the, the gems great, split, great, but a great pull, a great suck from Crying Man leaves gems in the middle and the countdown now with SSG. And I don't think there's enough that, that really uh, INTC can do from the middle to do anything about this now. They're trying to find a kill right now. They get just one member of SSG. They will be able to stop the countdown and go for a reset, but they're all in the spawn. Great pull from Bobby, able to find that kill. Shut it all down and SSG will take game number two. The adaptations are working for INTZ though. That's the big takeaway. Let's see if they can pull it back in game three. Wow, now the pressure now is 
got to be on INTZ. I mean, we, we're looking at now you know, match point effectively. Yes. And this is the really important deciding factor now is what do they do? Do they change brawler comp? Do they change strategy? Whatever they do, it's got to be now or this one's all over. But SSG with that additional damage and, and, and HP to be applied to a porter. So I think that you're right in that respect for sure. Well, there's no changes coming in, Ark, as we move into what could be the final game of today. Early gem lead start for Bobby. He's picked up two. He's not been able to dodge out. Oh, 300 HP, 67. He's going to stay alive as he gets into cover and walks away with those gems. Now, Crying Man has that mid control. But great thing about Mr. P as well, he can't tuck into the corner because the briefcase just goes straight over. So I'm starting to see the value of this more and more. But now Crying Man is right on top of Marcel. He has to back off. This is the same problem my MTZ have. They're great when they can play around the cover, but when they lose control of the spawn and lose control of mid, they cannot win the straight engagement and so much difficulty on the retake. Yeah, this is the thing. With Mr. Peace Super, when it's down, it can be troublesome, but if you can get that taken down from the source... Bobby. Early, oh, Bobby under a lot of pressure there. Does able just to survive. Has to go for a little bit of uh, comfort from OG's healing, <laughs> healing turret there. Uh, does survive, but only just. But they've never, the ICC have never had mid control this game, Ark. They, they, they're nine gems to nothing right now because they just can't sit in. Ten to nothing. They can fully retreat. There's no way to capture it. Greedy doing his best to try and find some comeback. He pulls Bobby in, but there's no team to support him. And now the respawns are coming in. SSG have just dominated this final map. And they are going to walk away as the victors in this North American LATAM final. Wow, what a display today from SSG, pulling out all the stops and taking it uh, in the fourth set then today. Uh, I think they, they, they looked very comfortable, they had good decisive decisions around the brawler comps and picks and um, uh, just a really, really great display from them today and they can go home proud for sure. So yeah, they win a, an effective inter-region clash that we had. Um, from their particular region, so they're going to be able to have a little bit of regional pride as well. There's the stats from the entire series. And